Come and take control. Spirit of our Savior, all His works fulfill. Spirit of our Father, come and do His will. Come, Holy Spirit. fear and shame by the blood of Jesus his victory proclaim spirit of our Savior all his words Well, for all our Kirk kids who have joined us today as we begin our service, the next bit uh, of our collage that we started last week and our thinking of what it means for God to be Trinity, um, I would invite you to take your central picture of you and your picture of your best friend and, and that are joined together. I want you to add another one. Think of someone who you learn a lot from. Okay, it could be a teacher, it could be a parent, it could be a grandparent, it could, it could be anybody you like. But think of somebody that you'll learn a lot from and connect yourself to them. Okay, So draw a picture, take a photograph, whatever it is, and add them to the story. What we will be considering today as part of the bigger part of the service is the Holy Spirit who walks beside us, who teaches us things. And in that is the understanding that God isn't just far away, he isn't out of touch, but he is with us. And through all of our life he is ready to teach us the things that we are ready to learn. But to be ready to learn, it's like being at school, you need to be ready to learn. You can't turn up at school half asleep and just think, oh, I'm going to nap on the desk. You can't just ignore everything because you'll learn nothing. So you need to be ready to learn. And think about some of the things that your teacher might say that would make you ready to learn. That might be have a good night's sleep. It might be to do your homework so that you know where you're going next. It might be to have a good breakfast so that you're, you, you can concentrate. It might be to dress comfortably, but, you know, not, not too uh, fashionably, but wear your uniform, be part of the school, get ready to dress, join, uh, ready to learn, join in, be part of everything, and you will learn. Well, the God who walks with us looks for us to do the same, that we 
rest in him, that we learn from him, that we do our homework, if you will, and, and engage with the Bible and, and try and understand it as well as we can. And then we apply it to our lives. We go and we put it into practice and we see where God leads us. So on, on your collage, you should, after today, have your central picture, your best friend, and someone who teaches you something all joined together. So that would be great if you can do that. And before we head on with the next bit of the service, let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that you are one who wants to teach us. We thank you, Jesus, for your example in our lives and all the things that we can read about in your word that you did. Uh, we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you can bring that to our memories and our thinking and our understanding and help us to grow. So we put ourselves in your hands, asking and inviting you to walk with us through our lives, not just on a Sunday, but every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. of the sun to the going down of the same the Lord's name is to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the Lord's name is to be praised
John chapter 15 The Vine and the Branches I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you may go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. The world hates the disciples. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done among them the works no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. As it is, they have seen, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. The work of the Holy Spirit. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the father, 
he will testify about me. And you must also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Amen. Hello again. We continue in our series thinking about the God who walks with us. The Spirit as a noun occurs more than 300 times in Scripture. And it's right from the beginning, right through to the end. Genesis 1, 2 to 5, the Spirit is part of creation. And in Revelation 22, 17 to 21, it's the last words which are an invocation of the Spirit to all who have their faith in God, Father, Son and Spirit. The Holy Spirit was present at the baptism of Jesus, Matthew 3.16, and partnered with him throughout his ministry. For the followers of Jesus, the key promise is that after the ascension, another helper would come, the Spirit. Various translations of the Bible will say, a counsellor, a comforter. In the Greek it's parakletos or paraklete. The one who walks beside, the advisor, the teacher, the guider, the supporter, the helper. So the promise of Jesus is that the companion he had through his ministry will be our companion also. In that exchange when Jesus says, you will do greater things than these, John fourteen twelve. Perhaps... He is talking about what we can accomplish in partnership with the Holy Spirit. The image that comes to hand is one of the ancient forms of teaching. Wealthy households would employ a tutor for their children and it would be one-to-one -one education. They would learn and grow in their understanding of the world with a pedagogue, a teacher, but ped, the start of the word, is where we get pedestrian and pedometer from. There's a sense of that walking with, that journey of faith. Faith and life held together. And for that, we need a teacher. Someone who will guide and direct to enlighten us and to comfort us. One who can explain and unveil as we explore life. Jesus tells his followers that part of the ministry of the Spirit is to continue teaching them what Jesus taught them. John 16, 14. To bring fresh understanding as they grow and develop. We will all have had experiences of being told something. Or perhaps an old family saying that that member that you know an auntie or a granny always used. And as a child, it, it never kind of made sense. But as an adult, we get it. A bit of wisdom, a bit of Sophia. The wisdom of God is made available to us through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. To highlight words in scripture that we didn't get before. Or because of changed circumstances in life. Or events that we are going through. Only now makes sense. Or gain a deeper significance. The spirit is almost like a, a spiritual highlighter if you will. Some will say that in that there is a danger of people making up their own gospel and claiming it to be a new insight from God. But it's clear from what Jesus says is that though the Spirit is there to provide deeper insight, it will always be in accord with the words that Jesus shared, the teaching that Jesus gave, what Scripture says. So when we read Jesus' words, the insight that the Spirit brings must be in accord with that. <coughs> That's what the letter of John means when he says, test the spirits. 
1 John 4, 1. Making sure so-called new teaching is in harmony with Scripture. Why is that important? Clearly the core of the revelation of God in Jesus is contained in the Bible. And I know we can look at how it was selected and how it was compiled, but we can trust the work of the Spirit through those who pull these documents together, that in that there is the core of, of God's teaching, God's reaching into the world. But we know too that since it was written, the world has moved on. We live in a very different technologically aware environment. Issues of ecology are not prominent in the Bible. And it was, at a t it was written at a time when slavery was really very commonplace. The technology that it that was existing at that time is nothing like we have today. This is proof of it. How we faithfully address issues of modern life from an ancient text requires the Spirit to breathe that deeper understanding, breathe that fresh insight, but not a new one but a deeper one, a more complex one. When we read the Genesis accounts of creation, we can skip over them. Genesis 1, you know the story. We see that God says that creation is good. We look at the world and see the mess humans have made of the planet. We should see a deeper truth about our stewardship. When we look at Adam being given charge over creation, have we misused and abused that God-given trust? Not just us, but all generations. And what we're going to do about that? How will we speak to that? How will we change that? The creation is once more good. In the face of the Black Lives Matter movement and the current debates around the interpretation or the presentation of historical figures, to read a deeper meaning into the words that there is neither slave nor free, male or female, Galatians 3 and 28. And with that, find that motivation to change the world we are a part of, to move it towards being good again, to reflect what Scripture says. When we think of technology and when new technologies come along, we have to recognise that technology in itself is neither good or bad. It's the use to which it's put that's important. How do we respond to the fallout from social media, online trolling, exploitation? We can't turn to scripture and find a verse that says, Verily I say unto you, Facebook is bad. Other social media platforms are available. It's just an example. But it should cause us to return to scripture and look again at what it means to be humane and human, being made in the image of God, and how we relate to others that are also made in the image of God, and to look and hear the Spirit's whisper, highlighting when we've lost our way or missed a point. This ongoing teaching and witness of the Spirit in our lives, this walking beside, is part of God the Trinity's plan and purpose in redeeming not just us, but the whole earth. Our role in this is to listen for that whisper. The whisper that comes from the one who walks beside us. And to respond. Have there been times in your life when you've turned to the Bible and found as if pages, 
suddenly have new meaning. Words leap off them. They glow with, with, with significance. They speak right into the moment that you're dealing with something hard. That's the Spirit working salvation's plan in you and through you and out into the world. If we fail to listen as people, we are destined to make the same mistakes over and over again. And you can say that it's hard to change the world. One person cannot change the world. But one person can speak up for truth and justice and right. And when one voice joins another, it becomes a clarion call, it becomes a shout, it becomes a chorus. If we can see this ministry of the Spirit in our lives, then we are in communion with the Spirit. Listen and respond. Hear and reflect. But as we do that, it is right to acknowledge the source of that insight. Yes, it is an insight from God. God the Spirit. A person in the Trinity in his, her own right. So it's okay to say, thank you Holy Spirit for that insight, for your guidance. It is also okay, therefore, to ask for specific help and guidance of the Spirit as we seek to live faithful lives within relationship of God, Father, Son and Spirit. In a way it's to rediscover that old saying that says, We pray to the Father in the name of the Son, in the power of the Spirit. It is the Spirit that moves in us, that moves us, as he and she walks beside each of us in every moment of our lives. As we walk, it is so easy to think we walk alone and we only connect with God at moments of our desperation or our exaltation. But hear the words of Christ. Another has come to walk beside us each and every moment. Practice the present presence of God. He is with you.
loving and gracious Father, thank you for planting the seed of joy in our hearts. Help us to grow in your ways. Help us to know that our faith, knowledge and love will only grow if they're rooted in your love. Grow us so that we bear the fruit to share and help others. We know that we can do nothing unless it is with your help and support. Allow us now to pray the prayers that will allow fruit to be released in our lives. Thank you, Father, that we are not alone, but are part of your family, working together to do your will. Grant that through this, the strife of this time, we may grow in wisdom and love for each other that can be shown in the community. Father God, enable us to take each day with you by our side. We pray for those who are not as fortunate as ourselves, whether they are in this country or anywhere in the world, that they may receive support from friends or workers, just saying hello. One word could make the difference for them, knowing someone has seen them and acknowledged them as a person. We thank you for the beauty that surrounds us in sunshine and in rain. We pray at this time that the harvest will be gathered safely as reaping approaches, be it in gardens, at home or in the fields of farms. May the joy that comes from following Jesus be our constant companion and is a gift from him to our hearts. Knowing this, let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive us give our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen Yeah. 